We're putting out about 450 uh, uh, electric horsepower, uh, so a lot, and about 400 foot-pounds of torque. So it's actually because of the, of the gearbox there, what you're seeing at the wheels is actually higher than what the motor is output. Oh, absolutely. So it's rated about 600 horsepower on the rear axle. So we're wow. putting nearly 5,000 foot-pounds of torque to the ground. Overall weight, how much did that change? Ice, it was 2,400 pounds, and uh, now we're at about 26 with the big Tesla motor and the bigger battery pack. All right, everyone, um, I'm here with Mitchell from Torque Trends, and he is going to take us through probably the most amazing uh, Miata that I have ever seen. Mitchell? Thank, thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. So what do we have here? Uh, this we built uh, back in 2013 as a test mule for developing our torque boxes. We wanted to have something where we could really test it, test it with power, test it on the track, make sure we we're moving the right directions, make sure we we're building a durable product. And so we built uh, the 99 Miata, okay. uh, the most raced car in the world, the most raced model car in the world. And uh, we built an autocross car for testing the product. So originally we started with a, uh, a Tesla Roadster 150 kW motor. We've just recently upgraded to the Tesla Model S. That's a 350 kW motor, 16,000 RPM motor. We're putting out about 450 uh, uh, electric horsepower, uh, so a lot, and about 400 foot-pounds of torque, a simple drop-in. A company called Revolt Systems took that transaxle from Tesla and made all the bits and pieces for laying it out uh, in line. Okay. So it's an easy drop in on any front engine, you know, rear drive car. So hot rods, classic cars, antiques, just a drop in. Anywhere you can put an LS motor, you can drop that Revolt package into. That's so amazing. Real happy with that. This is also Revolt's new product. This is a contactor box. It has the contactors, the big fuses. All the battery power comes into this box and then from there to the inverter. So okay, so contactor box here, that, right. and then that's, that's the, the inverter, inverter that right you're there. looking at. Right behind the inverter is the motor, okay. and then our torque box. Then the torque box is Single at the speed end. torque box. Okay. Right. And we have a short drive shaft, it's an aluminum drive shaft, and then the stock Miata rear axle, we've got a, a posi in it, okay. and bigger axles and bigger CVs from Porsche, and uh, so it's rated about 600 horsepower on the rear axle. We're making a, a 400 horsepower, 450 horsepower, about 400 foot-pounds of torque. So it's actually because of the of the gearbox there, what you're seeing at the wheels is actually higher than what the motor is output. Oh, absolutely. We're total. We've got about 12.3 reduction. We're multiplying the motor's torque by 12.3 times. So we're wow. putting nearly 5,000 foot-pounds of torque to the ground and it takes some Hoosier racing slicks <laughs> uh, and some control from the computer to prevent tire slippage, to really get it to the ground. That, uh, that must be a blast on autocross. Absolutely. Absolute rocket. Absolute blast. And we, it was a very fast autocross car with 150 kW. We fully believe this 350 kW is gonna make this the fastest autocross car in the world until somebody comes knocking on that door. But sure. Yeah, this is going to be very, very fast on the autocross circuit. And uh, this looks like a battery box here. Yeah, this is one of three battery boxes. What you see are the cells b below there, and it's a double decker. There's lower cells and upper cells. They're all managed through a BMS system, and we're just using air cooling. We have 285 CFM uh, fans on every battery box. For autocross, the runs, the race, yeah. is uh, 40 seconds or less. So they just really don't get very hot. We are do have a radiator, and okay. we are liquid cooling the motor, the inverter, and the charger. So in the charging mode, when you plug in at night and you're charging the car, the pump, we're running a Tesla Model S pump, it is engaged and it is moving uh, okay. ethylene glycol water mixture uh, through the inverter and charger and everything to keep things happy. Amazing, but right. because of the short amount of time for autocross, 
you don't need yeah, the that for cooling. the batteries. Yeah, cooling a battery pack with liquid is a little more sophisticated and expensive. Sure. We just didn't need to do that for autocross. If it was a big track car, multiple laps, that type of thing, or even a street car, I would consider definitely consider liquid cooling in the battery pack, or running Tesla modules, all that's laid out for you already. All the safety, the cooling is all in the modules. Okay. And that's a great way to go. But for us, the prismatic cells, these are, we have 192 55 amp uh, nominal 3.7 volt cells. So okay. we've got a 400 volt package, nearly 1300 amps we're throwing at the motor to make that power. And what's the total kilowatts per hour uh, about size? About 39 kilowatt hour. 39. And uh, we needed that voltage to make the Tesla motor happy. We really weren't looking for range. We've got about 150, 160 mile range on a charge, just normal driving. Uh, but it's really about the autocross uh, circuit. So with a full charge on this, we can go to the racetrack, have multiple drivers, uh, uh, everybody have a lot of fun, multiple runs. We're gonna go home with nearly a full pack. It's just not gonna use that much That's in amazing. a 40-second run. When I've been uh, tracking my Model 3, I get to do one about 20 minute session and then uh -huh. it's go charge. Oh yeah. Until the last second before it's time to go again. Oh, so yeah. that's really cool. You can just yeah. drive it all day. Right. Okay. Now, specific uh, autocross setup. Can you tell me about th this? Looks like uh, something special there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, this is just a what we call a service switch or sometimes referred to as a mechanic switch. Okay. If you're going to work on the system and you've got 400 volts, you want to lock that out. Sure. So you notice I've got a little tie on there, right there. So we have, we don't, we don't have 400 volts for anybody to get a hold of here. Sure. We've got that turned so off. So that's safety system. Right. And then we're looking at dual master cylinders. We've got a full Willwood uh, brake system on the car, rotors, calipers, and dual master cylinder, but no power. The Miata did have power brakes with the vacuum from the motor. We got sure. rid of the booster. It also had power steering. In this little car, we didn't need it. So, especially when you're on the power, yeah. you're pulling some weight off the front wheels. It, it feels like it's got power steering, you don't need it. Uh, <laughs> the dual master cylinders, so we have one for the front brakes, one for the rear brakes in a regulator so we can track tune it depending on the temperature, the tire we're running. Uh, we, can, we can control how much pressure at the rear brakes so we can tune the car front to rear so that we're not locking anything up. Uh, it, it, it really is adjustable and works well. Just like they do in NASCAR, yeah. they actually, when they're driving during the race, they'll be tuning the brakes or changing the percentage from front to rear. As the fuel disappears, the uh, rear end gets lighter. Sure. And they need a different braking effort uh, as it gets lighter before they fuel again. So they're actually adjusting that during the race. That makes yeah. sense. Oh, that's so cool. So if we move along this way. Sure. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, real quick, uh, it's, it is a single speed transmission. Okay. It doesn't shift. So all we have are these three black buttons. We've got forward, neutral, and reverse for putting it in gear. And then the buttons and the switches you see on the dash, those are for the six cooling fans for the batteries. Okay. So it's really simple. Everything else is pretty much stock and uh, not, much, not much else going on there. We do have the, the monitor, the display, and that'll show you, it's got many different screens. You can flip screens, touch of a button, and you can look at all your batteries, uh, state of health, you know, state of charge, sure. temperature, oh, all that cool. is recorded there. The power, the speed, your tachometer, everything is in that one gauge, just a flip screen. And then so I, this is our mid pack, okay. it's our big pack. It's actually got over 192 cells, 96 of them are in this pack. This area is where the convertible top used to fold into, and down below is where the fuel tank on a stock Miata, this was a 1.8 liter four cylinder, that's where the fuel tank was, small fuel tank. So we used that space, and it helped with our balancing of the weight. We still have 50-50 weight distribution. And Amazing. A, and we have another box, battery box. The rest of the cells are in the back, and along with most of the electronics are back here. The control. Okay, so, so I we, see you uh, you took some things apart so that we can see. Right. So no, that's the batteries that you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, that's the battery box in the back. So that's the identical size 
that we have in the front. Okay. And then the mid pack is the big one. That's the big one. Uh, then the electronics. This is a VCU 300 from AEM. Uh, this is uh, capable of managing multiple motors, and everything is controlled through this. This is the master computer. The smaller boxes here are the BMS, the battery management system, and it's multiple boxes because they typically would have this in each battery box. You would have multiples. Each one will handle 18 cells or cell sets. Okay. We're, we're a parallel, uh, 2P, 2 parallel, and uh, 96 in series. So we have 96 sets of two cells that are in parallel. So we've raised our amperage and really raised through series, really raised our voltage to get that 400 volts we want for the Tesla motor. And, uh, and then over here on the side, we've got uh, the CCU. That's a combined charging unit. It's a combination of a onboard charger, 6.6 .6 kW charger, mm -hmm. and a DC to DC, uh, similar to a, an alternator. Okay. Uh, and that's going to take the pack voltage at 400 volts and drop it down to 14 volts to run our 12 volt system, our lights, our wipers, anything that's 12 volt, we're running off of that. You see on that's this side, amazing. we've got a lead acid 12 volt battery. And yes, even Tesla, they hide it, but they run a <laughs> lead acid battery behind a cowl. And uh, you need 12 volts to tickle the computer to start the vehicle. Wake it up. And yep. once it wakes that up, you no longer need it. But you want to keep it charged so that DC to DC, that alternator, if you will, electronic alternator, keeps that battery charged. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. And this this one here is a, did we talk about that one? Yeah, PDU is a power distribution unit and it handles the lower voltage, uh, everything that is lower voltage we plug in and it controls that, but it's still talking to the VCU and taking command from the VCU. Okay, yep. gotcha. Right. And then the rear axle, you can't really see the diff, but we've got the stock Miata diff. Uh, we did put a limited slip in it and we put the Porsche uh, CVs and the axles, that's rated 600 horsepower. I think that this will go I, fastest autocross car, right? The Miata. We believe it'll be the, and anybody that thinks different, I'd like to see them at the track. Let's do we, it. We love people. We like having fun with everybody. And, you know, some of them are a little skeptical about electrics, but most of them have experienced a Model 3 or a Model S on the track. Yeah. And the things are quick. But this is purpose built to be as fast as it can be on an autocross track. Small track, tight track, just a small wheelbase car with a lot of power. It's all about putting it to the ground. So a couple more quick questions before yeah. we wrap up. Um, overall weight, how much did that change between the when you had it as an ICE car to right. now? ICE, it was 2,400 pounds. Uh, with the smaller motor, smaller battery pack, we added 40 pounds. Okay. And uh, now we're at about 26 with the big Tesla motor and the bigger battery pack. We also put more stiffener in the car. This is a unibody. It's got a front subframe and a rear subframe and uses the body in between. With the roll cage and the stiffeners we put in, uh, push on that corner of the car, you'll see it's very, very stiff. Oh, wow. And that's yeah. what you want with autocross. You want the tires to bite. And if the body's rolling, the weight's rolling, you're not getting that even bite that you want. So the car is very, very stiff. That added some weight to do that. But with the power we've got and putting 5,000 foot-pounds of torque to the ground, it, it can carry this weight and not even know it's there. Yeah. That sounds like a blast. Um, now, because this is air-cooled batteries, I mean, and it's a lot of power, are, are you ever seeing those temperatures go high, even in like say tracking in Arizona where it gets pretty toasty there? It gets, it gets toasty. We'll, we'll actually stay lower than ambient with the blowers on. Wow. Throwing the air through there. I've never seen them above 100 F, 100 Fahrenheit, and they're rated, they're good to, they're safe to 130, 140 F. So we don't even come close to testing the battery. They're also, the way you build a battery box is you want them in there tight. Yeah. And if you notice these rubberized threaded rod all the way through the box, top and bottom, see the nuts and the threaded rod coming yes, through? Yes, I see uh, that. Inside there, it's all rubberized. But we're tightening the box. We have separators between the cells, but we're actually squeezing the cell. So even if the cell did get hot, it can't expand. It can't damage itself. Got it. The cell's got a rubber bladder inside, and they'll tend to swell uh -huh. a little bit if they do get hot. 
One, we're not getting them hot. Two, if they did get hot, we've got them compressed, if you will. They're not going to expand. They're not going to hurt themselves. So. Cool. Well, what a rocket. Thank you very much, you bet. Mitchell, for taking us through. Our pleasure. And I really look Sorry. forward to seeing you at the track. We want you in the seat. I'll take we you up on that. We want you to that. drive it. Absolutely. Thank you much. Thank you.